Okay, uh, so what I'm going to talk about today is uh, finish up um, the discussion of the suspension spectrum loop space uh, adjunction from last time, um, and then start talking about fiber sequences and cofiber sequences, which are a special case of the more general concept of homotopy limits and co-limits. Um, so what, what we ended uh, by saying last time is that there is this adjunction between spaces and spectra uh, where the left adjoint is the suspension spectrum functor and the right adjoint is evaluated the zeroth space. Um, and this is actually a Quillen adjunction. And so it induces a, an adjunction between the homotopy categories uh, given by the derived functors of these things. Okay, so in case uh, you've forgotten what derived functor means, um, the left derived functor is uh, you take a, a cofibrant replacement of your space and you apply the suspension spectrum to it. And the right derived functor is you take a fibrant replacement of your spectrum and you evaluate at the zero space. Okay, so these, oh, this should say homotopy category. Um, so, so these are, uh, these are, these are homotopy invariant functors, um, which, is, which is why we like them. Um, and we can describe this, so the, this left edge joint is, I, I think, fairly, I mean, maybe not as interesting. Um, uh, a cofibrant space, uh, for example, is a CW complex. So, so this, is, this is saying take the suspension spectrum of a weakly equivalent CW complex. Um, but, uh, but this is slightly more interesting than just taking the zero space. Um, so we had a characterization of, of fibrant objects in the uh, in the stable model structure. Um, what we showed is that a spectrum is fibrant as, oh my God, sorry. <laughs> Uh, a spectrum is, uh, did I stop sharing? Yeah, I did. Christ. All right, one more time. Uh, a spectrum is fibrant in the, in the stable model structure if it's an omega spectrum. So in other words, um, the structure maps from the nth space in the spectrum to the loops on the n plus one space are all uh, weak equivalences of spaces. Okay, so so um, so what this what this right adjoint is is it's uh, it's the zeroth space of a weakly equivalent omega spectrum, um, and so we also write that as uh, as loops infinity. Okay, so there, there's a very explicit way to uh, produce an omega spectrum that's that's equivalent to a given spectrum. Um, here is one way we can do this. So this is a constructing fiber replacements. So um, given a spectrum X, let's define RKX to be the spectrum whose nth space is loops K of X n plus K. Um, the structure maps of the spectrum are we need a map from the nth space of this to uh, loops on its n plus one space. Um, so this is this is loops k xn plus k. This is loops loops k xn plus k plus one, which is the same as loops k plus one xn plus one. And we can just use the, the structure map on x to, to give a map like this. OK. Um, so uh, let's notice that. Um, the, the homotopy groups 
of, R, of the spectra RKX. So if I want to compute pi uh, j of RKX, this is the, the colimit of pi n plus j of the nth space in the spectrum. Um, which is which is that. And now this is the same as uh, pi n plus j plus k of xn plus k. And so this is co-final in the, in the system that computes um, pi j of x. So this is the same as pi j of x, uh, which means that the natural maps um, from x to rkx are weak equivalences in the stable model structure. Okay. Likewise, there are maps from, from RKX to RK plus 1X, and these, these are all weak equivalences. Okay. So now the idea is to, is to take the colimit of the sequence of spectra, um, but that's not exactly right. What we need to do is, is, uh, is take the homotopy colimit. Um, so I will define this uh, more um, more generally in, in a little bit. Um, so let me, let me write it down. We're going to say R infinity X. Uh, well, let me say it this way. It's the, it's the spectrum whose nth space is the, is the homotopy colimit of the nth space of the RKX over K. And, uh, and, um, this is a homotopy colimit that's indexed by a uh, um, indexed by the natural numbers. It's a it's a sequential homotopy colimit. So um, there's actually a, a very nice explicit definition uh, using which is called the mapping telescope. Um, so we can define this uh, as follows. So if we have a sequence of spaces um, a n, indexed by natural numbers, um, the, the homotopy colimit of the a n is the disjoint union of, of each space crossed with an interval um, where we identify a point living over the, the endpoint one of one of these intervals uh, with its image in the next space living over the endpoint zero. Let me write um, Fn for the map from An to An plus one. Okay. If these are if these are pointed spaces, then um, we can make this a pointed space by also identifying base point cross uh, cross the interval with a single point um, for each of the spaces. Okay. So the picture here um, is you're taking a bunch of mapping cylinders uh, coming from these various maps, and you're gluing them all together. Okay, so this is re replacing the, the ordinary colimit of the spaces with a colimit where um, we've we've sort of uh, uh, we've replaced each of the maps with with an inclusion. Um, I guess sorry, I should I should say one more thing that I keep forgetting. Uh, the um, we should we should require all these spaces to be uh, to be cofibrant. Um, so if we if we have a sequence of uh, of spaces which aren't cofibrant, then um, then the homotopy colimit should be this construction done to equivalent cofibrant spaces. Okay, 
So, um, so this construction has a few nice properties. Uh, one is that um, the homotopy groups of the homotopy colimit are the colimit of the homotopy groups. Um, the reason for this has to do with the fact that spheres are compact. Um, so any uh, any map from a sphere into this into this telescope has to factor through a finite stage of the telescope, um, and so it it represents a homotopy class in in uh, in one of these ans, um, and likewise any homotopy between spheres uh, factors through some finite stage, and 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 so it occurs as a homotopy in in one of the ans. Um, for a similar reason, there's an equivalence. Uh, between the loop space of the homotopy colimit and the homotopy colimit of the loop spaces. Okay, so now let's go back to our to our construction. Um, so what we were saying is uh, is we define these spectra by by sort of uh, shifting and and taking an iterated iterated loops on, on, on the spectrum X. Uh, now we want to take their homotopy colimit. Um, and since all the maps in this diagram are isomorphisms on homotopy groups and the and uh, pi star sends the homotopy colimit to a colimit, it follows that X is also um, also has the same homotopy groups as R infinity of X. So let me write that down. Uh, the natural map from X to R infinity X uh, induces an isomorphism on pi star. So this is this is a weak equivalence. Can I just ask a quick question about yeah. the uh, mapping telescope? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I, I was I'm trying to um, think about what the relation is between this and the ordinary colimit. So like if the if all of those maps were inclusions, would the homotopy colimit be equi homotopy equivalent to the ordinary colimit? Right, right, right. Oh, I see. Okay, and in general, would it be like if all the if all of the the, the maps were like cofibrations, it would exactly. be homotopy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say that um, late, late, later on, but that's that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So so what this construction is doing is we're replacing all the ans with cofibrant spaces, and we're replacing all the maps between them with cofibrations, and then taking the colimit of that. Um, right. And in this case, there's this very explicit construction using these these mapping cylinders. Um, OK, so, so the map from x to r infinity of x induces an isomorphism on pi star. Also, uh, if we think about the structure maps in the spectrum r infinity x, so the nth space of this is the homotopy colimit of loops k xn plus k. Um, this is uh, this is the same as the homotopy colimit of loops k plus one, x n plus k plus one, um, because this sequence is cofinal in this sequence. Uh, and now, by the second property of the Hokolim, we can pull out uh, a loop. So this is the same as loops Hokolim loops k, xn plus k plus 1, which is loops on the n plus, n plus 1th space in the spectrum. OK, so, um, so that implies that, uh, that this spectrum is an omega spectrum. Um, OK, so this is the, uh, this is the um, explicit vibrant replacement uh, that, that you can write down for, for a general spectrum. Um, and we should notice that uh, if we think about its zeroth space, so this is just Hoko Lim loops k x k and x by k, which sort of explains why this, why this is called the loops infinity of x. Okay, let's, let's look at a few examples. Um, first of all, there are some spectra uh, 
that we like that are already omega spectra. Um, for example, if we take the eilenberg maclean spectrum for some abelian group A, um, then its loops infinity is just its zeroth space, uh, which is the zeroth eilenberg maclean space of A. Um, likewise, if we take, say, the complex K, the complex K theory spectrum, loops infinity of this is its zeroth space, which is Z cross BU. Um, if we take the suspension spectrum of a, of a pointed space, um, then loops infinity, suspension uh, infinity of X, um, well, this is the same as the homotopy co-limit of loops N, suspension N, X. Uh, So this, this sort of construction was uh, considered by topologists like before Spectre even existed. Um, it's sometimes called uh, called QX. And, and the point is just that it's homotopy groups or the stable homotopy groups of X. OK. Um, so all of these are, uh, are, um, are what are called infinite loop spaces. So in general, we say that a, a space X is an infinite loop space. If there are spaces um, BNX for, for every N, and equivalences from X to the n-fold loop space on BNX. OK, so this is sort of, this is not just a property of the space, but it's also extra structure. And um, there, there are some technicalities involved in, in setting up, for example, a model category of infinite loop spaces. Um, but, uh, but like, it, it can be done. And um, there's tons of writing by Peter May and Adams and others on, on, on how to set this sort of sort of stuff up. Um, but this is this is kind of the simplest possible definition that you can give. Uh, so so in particular, if you take loops infinity of the spectrum, then you get you get back an infinite loop space. Um, let's notice that uh, there if we have an infinite loop space X, there are multiple possible choices for these D loopings BN X. And the reason is that if this is the only condition that I impose on, on these spaces, um, well, loops n destroys the homotopy groups in degrees 0 through n minus 1. So I could choose bnx to have uh, sort of arbitrary homotopy groups in, in those low degrees and still, um, and still have this property. Uh, but there's a, there's a sort of canonical way to do this. Um, so if x is an infinite loop space, Let's choose D loopings um, BNX so that uh, the homotopy groups of BNX are equal to zero in degrees zero through N minus one. And of course, um, the higher homotopy groups are the same as the, the homotopy groups of X. OK, so these, um, these spaces assemble into an omega spectrum. Uh, so there's a spectrum, let's say, B infinity of X with its nth space um, equal to bnx. I'm sorry, I need to add uh, one more condition to this. 
So let's also suppose um, Uh, let's also suppose that uh, that um, that b n x is equivalent to loops b n plus one x. Um, okay, so so now there's a spectrum b infinity x uh, defined by this property and using these maps as its structure maps and this is an omega spectrum. Um, so this gives a way to, to lift any infinite loop space to an omega spectrum with that space as its, as its zeroth space. Um, if you set things up right, there is an equivalence. Um, so there is an equivalent equivalence between some model category of, um, of infinite loop spaces. and some category of spectra. Um, and to say this right, so I'm, I'm gonna write it like this. So we should notice that the spectra, the spectra that we're producing by doing this construction um, satisfy a condition on their homotopy groups. Uh, so we are choosing the spectra so that their nth space has zero homotopy in degrees zero through n minus one. And this implies that the resulting spectrum has no negative degree homotopy groups. Uh, so, um, so we'll say that a, uh, a spectrum is zero connective if, uh, if pi star x equals zero in degrees less than zero. And I'll write this for the category of, of zero connective spectra. So, um, so again, some work has to be done to, to set up some model category structures on these things and, and actually make sense of this, but, um, but the basic idea should be clear um, that up to homotopy and infinite loop space is the same thing as a connective spectrum. It lifts canonically to a, to a zero connective spectrum. Um, uh, by the way, the, the, so I'm, I'm going off of uh, Barnes and Royce for all this, but um, they, they have some very weird uh, terminology for this sort of thing. So I would recommend like they say connected, um, which I think is very strange uh, because a space whose pi zero is bigger than zero would not be considered connected. Um, so that, that's why we say connective rather than connected, connected for this sort of thing. Um, but anyway, uh, right. So um, any questions about any of that? So just to summarize, um, there's this way um, of, I oh yeah, like, go ahead. Oh, good question. Um, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, sorry, I didn't interrupt, but uh, I, I guess I was wondering, I was like, if I'm not mistaken, like don't like infinite loop spaces like have homology operations on them or? Yeah, they do, they do. If, do. Do you have similar homology operations or like homology, um, homology operations on like connect spectra? Um, yeah. yeah. Or maybe just uh, like, I, is there, do they map over to each other, if that makes sense? Right. I, th I think that all of that, that you can recover that with, um, with structure on the, on the homology of the spectrum. Um, oh, okay. But I would have to think about that. What's the... I mean, it's important. I, I don't want to like. No, it's know. it's incredibly important. I just don't. I don't. I don't know how to answer off the top of my head. I mean, yeah. If you take a, okay. uh, if anyone else knows how, how to answer, you should you should jump in. Um, so like, so what Zach is saying is that the the 
say the mod p homology of an infinite loop space has dire lash up operations on it. Um, and if we lift that to a spectrum, we should be able to see them. I think it's the same. No, I'm not sure. I think I'm. I think I'm just blanking on it. But but let me get back to you about it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I don't know. That. Yeah. Anything else? Um, yeah. For you said constructing this omega spectrum from an infinite loop space to pick the loopings. Is there like a canonical way to do that? Right, right, right. So, so, um, so part of part of this part of what I'm saying here is that uh, if you if you fix the lower homotopy groups of each of the d loopings, then the resulting um, object is well defined up to weak equivalents of spectra. Okay. Um, but that's I don't think that's obvious. Uh, but it's it's true. <laughs> I mean, if you're like you somehow you're you're fixing all the homotopy groups of of all the objects involved, and in, intuitively at least, you know, a, a spectrum is determined up to up to weak equivalence by its homotopy and groups so, by its homotopy okay. groups. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you're <clears throat> you would only be fixing stuff up to a finite stage in each one, so it's only the stuff above that that actually matters for the. Right, but the stuff the stuff above it is fixed too, because these are supposed to be d loopings of of x. They they all satisfy this as well. Um, oh, right. Yeah. So in in other words, if you know that x is an infinite loop space, then the the only freedom you have in choosing d loopings of it is in the lower homotopy groups, and so. So what I'm saying is the canonical choice is to pick all of those, all of those to be zero. Um, I don't know if people if people want to see it, an actual proof of this. I can I can definitely try to do that. Just really quick, is there a notation for? Um, like taking a suspension spectrum and then doing the cofibrant replacement on what you get? Uh, taking a suspension spectrum and then doing a cofibrant replacement. So the, the homotopy invariant process is doing those two things in the other order. Um, if we go back up to the top, right? So since this is a left-derived functor, the way that we do left-derived functors is you replace the input with a cofibrant object. For example, a weakly equivalent CW complex, and then you take the suspension spectrum of that, um, which will automatically be a cofibrant spectrum. Is that does that does that answer your question? Or, or um, I think so. Are you saying if you infinitely suspend a CW complex, you actually get a, an omega spectrum? No, 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 no. You just get a you just get a spectrum. You, you get a cofibrant spectrum, um, which would be. I mean, if it's if you start with a CW complex, then you get a CW spectrum at the end. Uh, but that's um, but it's it's almost certainly not going to be an omega spectrum. Um, sorry, are, so are you asking about take the suspension spectrum, then take a then take a fiber replacement of that? Uh, Maybe yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so then that yeah. that would give you an omega spectrum. I don't I don't think there's like notation for that, but you know, invent your own. Uh, Wait, yeah, sorry. So what are the, what are the cofibrant uh, objects, the fibrant ones are uh, omega spectra? Right, the cofibrant objects are, um, uh, let's think, we, we talked about this last, last time. Um, they have to, they have to be level wise cofibrant. Um, so each space in the spectrum has to be a, a cell complex or a retract of a cell complex. Um, and um, and I think that the, you know, I'm, I'm actually not sure if we, if we came up with a great characterization of them. Um, I think we said that it's a sufficient condition to be cofibrant 
if your level wise cofibrant and the um, or if you're if you're level wise a cell complex and the, the structure maps are inclusions of, of subcomplexes. Um, so in particular, any CW spectrum is cofibrant, but but I think that there are other cofibrant spectra as well, and we just we didn't describe them. Okay, um, so uh, so the the next thing I want to talk about is uh, homotopy limits and colimits. Um, And this is a concept, this is a, an incredibly powerful concept that makes sense in, in any model category. Um, and as sort of a prelude, uh, let's, let's notice that limits and co-limits exist in, in the category of spectra um, and they're defined object-wise. So, or they're defined level-wise. Um, so for example, if we have a diagram um, of spectra X alpha indexed by some, by alpha in some indexing category, um, then the nth space of the limit would just be the limit of the, uh, of the nth spaces in the X alpha, um, with the structure maps, uh, coming from the, the, the loop space definition of the structure maps. So in other words, um, there's a map from this to to this. Um, since, um, since the loop space is a right adjoint, it, it uh, preserves this limit. Um, Sorry, I wrote that down wrong. So this is the same by definition as um, as loops of the limit of the n plus one spaces, and then the loops um, goes through the limit. And likewise, uh, for the co-limit, we could define the co-limit um, level wise and then uh, and then use the suspension um, definition of the structure maps together with the fact that that suspension preserves co-limits to to um, to give the result to the structure of a spectrum okay um, but these these are not always the right concept to use um, so they are the right concept to use when you're talking about uh, or they're more or less the right concept to use when you're talking about things like products and co-products um, but uh, often you want to instead use a construction with the property that if you vary the inputs, um, if you replace the inputs with, with weakly equivalent inputs, then you get a weakly equivalent output. Okay, so this is even a problem in spaces. Um, so in spaces, uh, we have push out squares that look like this. So if I have X mapping to a point, then the, the push out of this diagram is just a point. Um, but we can replace the uh, the points with weakly equivalent spaces, for example, with the cone on X. And now the push out is the suspension of X, um, which is probably not contractible. Uh, a, a related concept is at the very beginning of this seminar, we were talking about um, fiber sequences and cofiber sequences in spaces, and um, and we saw that these induce uh, induce long exact sequences on homology or on homotopy, um, but you have to you have to have some conditions on on the map that you're starting with in order to sort of make them work right. So um, and so this is the. So, so basically the idea here is that this diagram on the right is, is sort of the correct one. Um, and this, the suspension of X should be thought of as the homotopy push out of this square. Um, and likewise, if we have a map, then um, 
we have a homotopy invariant notion of cofiber of that map where uh, you replace the map by a CW inclusion and take the cofiber of that. Okay, so here's one way to say this in general. Um, so let's say that we have a diagram X alpha induced by some uh, indexed by some some indexing category I. Um, then the homotopy colimit of the X alphas is the universal object equipped with a um, with a homotopy coherent uh, I think I'm supposed to say cocone homotopy coherent cocone from the uh, from the diagram X alpha. So what I mean by that is, um, first of all, to be a to be a cocone at all, you're supposed to have um, a map from each object in the diagram to X. Second, if we have two objects in the diagram and some map between them, then these objects both uh, come equipped with maps to X, but we don't require this tri this triangle to commute. We instead we require it to commute up to homotopy. Okay, so there's um, so there's a homotopy, let's see if I call this F alpha and I call the maps in the diagram G alpha beta. Um, so there's a homotopy from uh, F beta composed with G alpha beta to F alpha. Uh, likewise, if I have two composable maps in the diagram, So now um, let's see, all three of these spaces come equipped with a map to X. All three of the, the triangles um, are associated with a homotopy between some maps. And those three homotopies should be related by a two cell. So um, there's a, a two cell or higher homotopy uh, connecting all the, all the homotopies and so on and so on. Okay, so this is this is what it means for a diagram to be um, to be homotopy coherent. Uh, if your diagram is small, you typically don't need to worry about about all of this um, structure. And in particular, we're going to be mostly thinking about uh, push out diag push out diagrams, which are fairly simple. Um, so uh, let me let me make a few remarks about this definition. Um, first of all, oh, and so so again, um, this is the the point of this is to define the, the homotopy element. So this is the um, the universal object equipped with a homotopy coherent cocone from the diagram. Um, that object, uh, so. So first of all, the homotopy co-limit um, is only defined up to homotopy. So it's really an object in the homotopy category. Um, it's also not the same as the co-limit in the homotopy category. Okay, if we have a diagram whose colimit we want to take in the homotopy category, then um, that colimit is supposed to have a map from all the objects. Um, 
and all of these all of these triangles are supposed to commute up to homotopy, but we're not imposing any of these any of these higher conditions. Um, so this is this is a, a stronger notion. And finally, um, this in principle this makes sense in any model category uh, because there are notions of homotopy in any model category. Okay, so this definition involving homotopy coherent diagrams is kind of a, a higher categorical or infinity categorical way to think about it. And one of the nice things that you can do that you can do with model categories is um, is define this entire concept in a completely different way um, that sometimes makes it easier to calculate uh, what the homotopy colimit is. Um, so uh, let's say that we have a model category M. And we still have this um, this diagram category I, which is indexing our our colimit diagram. So um, under certain conditions on M, uh, actually the conditions are if M is cofibrately generated, uh, then there's a Quillen injunction. between functors from I to M and M, where the left adjoint is take the colimit and the right adjoint is the constant diagram functor. Okay, so, so um, part of the theorem here is, is, that the, uh, is that this category of functors has a, uh, has a nice model structure on it. Um, and it's not hard to describe that model structure. So, this category of functors um, has the model structure in which uh, this is called the uh, the projective model structure. In which cofibrations. And weak equivalences are level wise. And that is the opposite of the correct thing to say. The correct thing to say is that vibrations and weak equivalences are level wise. Um, um, yeah. Are there any restrictions on I other than like being small? Nope. Just okay. being small is good. Yeah. And by colim, you mean homotopy colim here? No, no, no. I mean literal, literal colim. In. Um, uh, okay. Okay. So, so you're you're familiar with this adjunction for ordinary categories already, and, and all that I'm adding to it is that you can give the functor category a, a model structure such that it becomes equivalent adjunction. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, so, so now um, once you've set that up, then the homotopy colimit is the left derived functor of this. Uh, Uh, sorry, this is an adjunction between the homotopy categories. Okay. So, um, so the nice thing about this setup is that sometimes it's possible, depending on what your diagram is, to to identify um, when a diagram in your category M is cofibrant, uh, because all this says is replace your your diagram with a with an equivalent cofibrant diagram. Um, and then take the colimit of that. Uh, so th there are a few um, explicit examples which we can give. Uh, oh, and by the way, um, I forgot to say this, but a good reference for all this stuff. Um, so it, there's there's these like long uh, notes by uh, Duggar um, called a primer on homotopy colimits.
Okay, so here are some examples. Um, first of all, if I is a discrete category, then um, a diagram X alpha is cofibrant uh, if it is cofibrant object wise. Okay, so the homotopy coproduct is just a coproduct of a bunch of equivalent cofibrant objects. Um, if I is the natural numbers, uh, so this is this is the example of a sequential homotopy colimit that we thought about earlier. So a diagram um, like this is cofibrant. If um, each xi is cofibrant and all the maps are cofibrations. Okay, so the mapping telescope was defined as the co limit of a diagram that, that has these properties. And that's that's equivalent to the original diagram. Uh, finally, if you take the indexing category for a pushout diagram, which looks like this, um, well, a diagram is cofibrant if um, all objects are cofibrant. And all maps are cofibrations. And in this case, it's possible to do something slightly better, um, which I'm not sure whether or not we will use this. But there's a there's another model structure um, on the functor category, uh, which is quillin equivalent to the projective one, um, where. Uh, where a diagram is cofibrant if all objects are cofibrant and one of the two maps has a cofibration. So I'll just write that it's possible to weaken this um, to all objects cofibrant. And uh, one map is a cofibration. Okay, so um, so I mainly want to think about about this example of um, of homotopy pushouts. Uh, so, um, if we're given, let's say, a diagram of spaces, uh, where one of the spaces is a point, um, so this is in top star. Uh, we can replace um, replace x and y by CW complexes. And f by a CW inclusion. And the point by the cone on x. Okay, so we've now replaced the diagram with one that looks like this. This map is a CW inclusion of CW complexes, and this is the inclusion from X into the cone on X. So the push out of such a diagram is um, Y, uh, glued to the cone on X over X. And this was the thing that earlier, if this map is called F, we called this the, uh, the, the mapping cone on F. Um, as a special case of this, let's say that y is a point. So, um, so if I start with a diagram that looks like this, and I assume that x is a CW complex, um, then we can replace the whole diagram 
with uh, with one that looks like this. And now the push out of this diagram is uh, is the suspension of x. Okay, so the homotopy push out of the diagram that has x mapping to the point both ways um, is just the suspension of x. And I think I'm going to do a little corner with an h to indicate that this is a this is a homotopy push out square. Um, by the way, so I'm I'm saying this about spaces, but actually uh, this this construction. Um, make sense in any model category. So, um, so we can define uh, in in general. Just define the cone on X um, by the following factorization. There's a natural map from X to a point, and we can factor it as a as a cofibration followed by an acyclic fibration. Okay, and so any space that fits into such factorization should be called the cone on X, and this allows you to. Um, to define uh, to define mapping cones um, in the same way in in any uh, in any model category. Okay, so um, what else is there to say about this? Uh, so this this works. In any model category. Um, and we'll say that in general that uh, a square is a homotopy pushout square. Um, If the natural map from the homotopy pushout of of this part to W is an equivalence. Okay. In particular, the um, the top corner of the diagram need not have this this cofibrancy property, but um, but all that matters is that uh, is that is that W sort of has the right homotopy type. Okay, so here's where we're going with this. Um, oh, and by the way, I've been talking about homotopy colimits for 20 minutes, but but there's a dual theory for homotopy limits um, which works exactly the same, uh, and in particular, the uh, the homotopy limit of a of a diagram like this. Uh, nope. The homotopy uh, pullback of a diagram like this is is um, in spaces is uh, the loop space on X. Um, all right, let's see. Juan, you're right. I do need to assume that my model category is a terminal object, but. We've been using the definition that model categories have all small limits and colimits, so I think that that is fine. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, and I think we'll most of the time we'll probably be wanting to work in a pointed model category, which is a model category whose initial object is the same as its terminal object, um, and that's true for pointed spaces and for spectra. And uh, Evo, yeah, you're right. We can um, we can still get the suspension if we uh, if we replace um, one of the one of these cone, cone, cones on X with just a point. Um, here's an here's um, an for the oh yeah go ahead for the homotopy limit side of things. Can mm -hmm. we do a similar thing where we take like an injective model structure on the diagram category? And yeah. then, and then, okay. Yeah, exactly. So the the injective model structure. Let me go back to where I was talking about the the projective model structure. Um, 
So in the, in the projective model structure, all fibrations and weak equivalences are level-wise. In the injective model structure, all co-fibrations and weak equivalences are level-wise. Um, and that exists under some fairly weak conditions on M. Okay, um, so one of the upshots of this is that the notion of suspension spectrum and loop space actually makes sense in any model category. Um, and here's an, a nice little exercise about this. Uh, so if you're familiar with chain complexes, you should think about these constructions in, in chain complexes and show that uh, that suspension and loops as defined this way, are equivalent to um, to the shift functors on chain complexes. Okay, so um, so the thing that we're going to prove uh, uh, next time, hopefully, um, about spectra is that in spectra, a square is a homotopy pushout square. if and only if it's a homotopy pullback square. Um, in the case where Y and Z are both a point, we sort of know this already. So, so the push out of um, the, the homotopy push out of this diagram, as we said, is the suspension of X, uh, but X is equivalent to loops suspension of X. So this square is also a homotopy pullback square. Um, so this is this is sort of, uh, but th this is a, a strengthening of this, and it turns out that you can you can prove it by using this uh, this fact about loops and suspension being um, inverses to each other. Um, and this is this is one of the ways to define a a model structure being stable. Um, another example, if you do this exercise, is um, uh, suspension. The so the shift forwards and shift backwards functors on chain complexes are are clearly uh, inverse equivalences. Um, so uh, and and likewise, you can show that in chain complexes, a, a square is a homotopy pushout square if and only if it's a homotopy pullback square. Um, right. So uh, I think that's a that's a good place to stop. Um, I guess next time I'll attempt to prove this and talk about the important special cases of fiber sequences and cofiber sequences of spectra. Um, are there any questions before I stop the recording? See ya. Uh, this last condition. This, this is like one of the conditions for being a, a stable infinity infinity one category or something. Is right, that, right, right. actually hold here? Um, yeah, so I think the, the definition of stable stable infinity category is uh, is some some variant of this. Um, and and that does that does hold for spectra. Is that, is that also true for chain complexes? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. So I have a question. Like, so now you can, um, using the homotopy column and, and uh, limit, you can define suspension and loop for an, in any model category, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's what you're saying. It's just like the homotopy co-equalizer or co, co or equalizer. Um, so then, like, you can make you can define spectra whose elements are in any model category, right? Like, could, yeah. can you? Yeah. Can you just yeah, have like, you can. Yeah, you can. You instead can. of spaces and split, you know, you could have spectra of 
chain complexes or something like that. I don't know. Um, right. Right. There's a very beautiful. Oh, sorry. Go on. Are you going to say more? No, no, no. I was. I didn't have like a real question. I was just like, you can do that, right? Like, do, do people like do that? I don't know. Yeah. So this yeah. is in, so um, this is in um, chapter one of Higher Algebra. Uh, it's um. I guess I do, I don't know a good resource for the for the model category viewpoint on it, but the infinity category viewpoint is is described. Um, and I mean, basically, like you can you can say it pretty simply. Um, you, you can say that if you have an infinity category C, then you can think about uh, you can think about objects um, which look like uh, which look like omega spectra in C. So um, so uh, sequences of objects X N in C um, equipped with uh, equivalences from X N to loops X N plus one. So this this is huh. like the category of spectrum objects in C. Um, huh. You know, it's weird because like the original motivation. Well, I don't know if this was if it really was the original motivation, but the original thing with the Freudenthal suspension theorem like seemed like it was just like a weird observation about topological spaces that this thing happens like if you suspend them enough, then they're you know, but like now we're not even talking about spaces anymore. Like now everything is totally abstract, like just model right. structures and stuff like what. So does this notion of uh, yeah, what happens to the notion of stability? Like, is it is this saying that there's something like there's like a deeper meaning to it or something like a more abstract meaning to this? Like, um, yeah. Background? So for for example, chain complexes is a, is a stable complexes model category. Is a stable model category. Um, yeah. And that's, and I mean, that has some things to do with spaces. That has not, some things to do with spaces, but it's not. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm echoing out of someone's mic. Oh it's, it's really uh, <laughs> distracting. Um, uh, yeah, what was I, what was I saying? Well, so, so for example, I, I think there's a lot of interest um, these days with with things like equivariant spectra or parameterized spectra or, or motivic spectra which are um defined as as stabilizations of other of other sort of model categories um and hmm. again usually usually the hope is that you can use those you know people introduce spectra to prove things about spaces and the, right. the freudenthal suspension theorem lets you take some things about spectra and and uh deduce conclusions about spaces from them. And, and I think similarly, right. you know, people are maybe originally more interested in motivic spaces than motivic spectra and that spectra, that spectra, spectra are tool spectra to, to, hmm. to prove some stuff about motivic spaces or something. Spaces or something. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Let me stop the recording.